Welcome to another Data Director tutorial. In this video, we'll show you some features that we haven't introduced yet and introduce you to a brand new feature, the Object Wizard, a new data port type that allows you to create forms in the PIM Core backend. Specifically, today's topics are the following. How to add new data ports to the main menu and launch them from there. The new import summary feature creating objects in relation to certain criteria, moving products with an object wizard form, performing bulk edits with the object wizard data port, using object wizard forms for exports, and creating printable documents with the new form. Enjoy the video. We hope you can learn a lot from it. Welcome to the new Data Director tutorial. This time it is about object wizards. This is a new data port type and you can use it to create forms in the PIM Core backend. Now let's see at the concrete topics. First, I'd like to show you how you can add data ports to the start menu and run them from there. And then we take a look at the new import summary feature. Then I'd like to show you how you can support object creation in daily business to guarantee that certain criteria are fulfilled. Then I want to show you how to how you can create an object form, object wizard form to move products. Um, there are some problems in default PIM core and I'd like to show you how object wizard can help there. Then I'd like to show you how you can do mass edits, for example, to raise prices for all products of brand Speedwave by X percent. Uh, you know, with the PIMCO grid, you cannot do relative changes. Then I'd like to show how you can use object wizard forms for exports and also create some print documents also with the form. So let's start with the new start menu. For that, I have prepared a PIM core. We have some basic classes, brands and products really not no magic involved and I've already imported the brands but now I'd like to import the products and I'd like to show you a new way of doing this. I've already set up the data port for that. We do not have to look in this in detail. Um, I've explained it in another video how to set up CSV imports but there is a new thing and this is that we can add it to the main menu. There are certain options. Either you can choose that it only gets added for the current user to the main menu or that it gets added to the main menu for a certain role of users. For now, let's take the current user. Now it gets displayed in bold, but even more important is that it's now available in the start menu. This is actually also the reason why the data director got moved from the settings menu to its own place, because then it's easier to access those start menu data ports. Now, when we click that, then the import form opens and we can select the file from our hard disk and can start the import. And now there is the new summary window. At the top, you see the progress of the import and at the in the middle section, you see all the changed objects and even the unchanged objects. Um, when we expand this, we see on field level what the import changed. So for example, SKU stayed the same, but EAN, this is a random EAN, this got changed and we see it here, the diff on the, on the right. So this way you have control what got imported if there are any errors occurred, then they will also be listed here. And I think this helps in daily business to, to execute imports and getting overview of what happened. Yes, now it's finished. And now we should have all the products under their brands. Right. Now for the bulk import, we have set up this hierarchy to be on first level the brand and on the second level the products. But when you want to create a new product object manually, you could also create it under the root level and this is not how the process was designed. 
But in PIMCO currently, there is no way to restrict um, that product objects can only be created under brand objects. But to support data maintainers, we can create a form, an object wizard form to create products. Yes, and so we are on the second topic for today, object creation. Our defined object hierarchy I've described and another requirement is that the SKU is a mandatory field. And now there is our goal. We want to create a new product gold ring under the brand Kiara Jewelry. Now with default PIMCO, PIMCO we would have to find the Kiara Jewelry object, the brand object, and in optimal case, you can use the tree search, but beware that this only searches for prefixes. So when we want to search for jewelry, it would not, will not find anything. When we search for Kiara, it will, it will find Kiara jewelry. So in, in daily business, that this may be a problem. So in worst case, you have to use the data object search and then the show in tree button to get to the brand object Kiara Jewelry in the tree. Then when you found the object, you have to right click Kiara Jewelry, add a new object, select product, the product class, then enter the gold ring as a name, enter all those fields and save and publish. This is very much steps to do for creating a single product. Uh, when this gets done frequently, then it may be a good idea to simplify this process. And this can be done with an object wizard. So we create a new data port, create product. This data port is of source type object wizard and our target class is product because, because we want to create product objects. And now we come to the raw data fields. For object wizard imports, the raw data fields is the fields of the form, which we will create. So we defined that we need three fields, SKU, name and brand. So let's create this. SKU is an input field and the field as field type, we have all the fields available, which you can also use in your data object classes. So for input, and the, the detailed configuration we can do here with this little icon. The SKU in our case shall be a mandatory field, so we check this field. The second field is the product name. Again, it's the same, it's an input field without any restrictions. And the third field is the brand. There we can use a main to one relation and we can define that it's only allowed to assign brands. So this will be used to um, put the object, put the product under the correct brand in the object hierarchy tree. We save that and then in attribute mapping, we define how, to, how the object shall be mapped. For the object name, we will use the raw data field name. For the path, we will use the brand and for the English name we also use the name and for SKU we use SKU. And SKU is our key field, um, so even if the object already exists, it will not be, be recreated, but it will be updated. Now when we also add this to the main menu and reload PIMCore, then we will see that we now have two data ports in our main menu. And when we now create product, this form opens. This is the form which we just created. SKU is a mandatory field. Let's type in some number. My new product is the product name. And then for brand, we could either search it in the tree. But of course, this has the same problems as I've de uh, described with the Kiara with the prefix search. We can also use the object search, which we know from the many to one relation. So let's search here for Kiara, or we could also search for jewelry. It will find it. We will select it and then execute the import. Now we see that this time 
our new object got created. We already see it here in the past that it got correctly assigned to Kiara Jewelry. And when we open that, we see that the SKU is the one which I have typed in. The path is correct, so it got assigned under the brand. And the key and the name are set as defined. Now when we open that object, you see it here that this really created this object with the defined values. So this is an easy way to support daily processes which happen very frequently and where PIMCO itself does not offer an optimal way to solve those challenges. Now the next topic is to update existing products. We want to move a certain product because it currently is not assigned under its brand, it's assigned in the folder without brand, to its brand object. Now the problem is you cannot show both objects in the tree at the same time. You see the beset object is this one, Avon PK504, and this is in the folder without brand, but the brand Avon is not available here because it's on the second page. It's here. Now you cannot show both objects at the same time to move it by a drag and drop. For this reason, you can create an object wizard form with two fields. A field for setting an object or multiple objects and a field for the target where the object should get moved to. Let's again create a new data port of type object wizard. Again, it's for products. We will, uh, we will um, set certain products. This time we want to support also um, that we can apply the change to multiple objects. For this reason, I choose the many to many object relation. And we say that only products should get uh, should get allowed here. And as a second raw data field, we use the, the move target, or let's say the brand. Brand again is a manager one relation. And then in the mapping, we simply define that for ID, we take the products, so this will be our primary field, and we want to put them to the path, move them to the path which got defined by brand. And that's it. If we also um, add this to the start menu, we can click move products. Now we see our form, this time it has only two fields. And now we can select our objects. This one we wanted to use. And we move it to Avon, which is on the second page. Then we start the complete import. And again, we see that the product got moved from without brand to products Avon. When we update it here, then we see that our product is here. Now, to show you that it also works for multiple products, let's go back to the without brand folder. Let's take those two and we want to move them to products at home. This time it changed two objects and it both got moved to the at home brand. When we now refresh, uh, then both are here, 20 dresses and the three wish. So this way you can also implement uh, mass editing um, processes where PIMCore does not offer an optimal way to do that. As the fourth, fourth topic for today, I'd like to show you how to create an object wizard to raise prices for all products. Um, 
by a certain number of percent. Because in PIMCore default mass editing feature, you can show the price field. In this case, it's a quantity value field, but you can only um, edit it to an absolute value. It's not possible to take the current value and increase it or decrease it by a certain amount of percent. But with an object wizard form, this is possible. So let's create a new data port. Where is prices? It's again an object wizard. To manage many object relations to the products. Again, the same as before. We use SKU and name as the visible fields. Save that. Um, oh no, and the price raise in percent. This will be a numeric field. And this time the mapping, I'm oh, sorry. This time the mapping is a little bit more complicated. Sorry, I forgot product class here as the target class. Now again, we want to change the products and for the price, we will use the price race. But of course we have to access the current price. So we check if the object currently has a price. Um, then As it is a quantity value, you, um, quantity value, we want to access the field value. This is the the number of the price. In contrast, that it also has a unit field, but we do not want to change this. Um, the value should be increased. Oh, sorry, should be increased by the entered number of percent. Otherwise, the current value stays the same. Of course, only if a percentage has been entered. Now we could add it to the main menu again, but it's also possible to execute such a data port with the known way of starting complete import manually. It will raise the same form. And then we can, let's use the search this time. Um, We take two, those two products and we want to raise their price by 10%. And when we check it with the calculator, that's the correct value. Now let's see for the other one. I think it's also correct. Um, and this value really got entered here as the new price. So this way you could implement forms to do math editing changes, which is not even possible with the math editing features of PIMCore. Of course, you can develop this further by not having to select the products manually, but to define the brand whose product prices shall be raised by 10%. This time we use the many to one relation Sorry, I need to one relation. Brand. And then in the mapping, we use the brand as the key, also possible. This is now our key field. And when we now start this import, we can now select the brand. I've written in the topic list to be Speedwave. Let's search for that. There it is. And we want to raise their prices by 20%. And now we see that all the Speedwave products, you see it in the past, now get raised by 20%. 
also here again calculation times 1.2 it's correct and when we open this object then see that the price is now raised uh, but by 20 percent as entered now this is a typical task which happens in daily business so even you can with those object wizards you can even implement processes which with default pim core would be really complicated but with those object forms you are really free to implement whatever processes you need those object wizard forms can not only be used for import processes but also for export products so at first i'd like to create a new data port which exports the product as json with the fields sku product name and price so for that i create a new data port it's based on pimco objects we want an export and we want to export products and we want to export sku product name and price sku name and price we choose json export and the mapping is automatic automatically completed now we can also add this to the main menu refresh pim core And then it appears here we can enter a filter condition but for now that's not necessary i only want to show you that the summary also works for exports now you see that the export is being processed and when it's finished you get the result file as download there it is this is our export and this contains all of our products right so this uh, summary also works for exports. Um, but the even more interesting things is to configure a data port which only exports some products. And to do that, we can create a new, uh, another data port which is an object form data port and provides is, its data to this JSON export. For that, let's rename this one to worker. And the new one will be our main menu item. Now we choose object wizard again, and we define that we want to manually configure which products shall be exported. We choose products, let's give you a name is enough, and save that. And now we want to trigger the JSON export as a dependent data port. So we select the template function for start dependent import. The the data port ID, uh, ID which we want to call is 64 and in the parameters we need to transfer the set products from our form uh, products and we want to transfer this to the other data port as parameter product IDs Um, each we loop through all the assigned products which been, have been assigned to the form and we provide this to the other data port as a comma separate list Sorry, again, we only want to do that 
if really products got entered. Additionally, we have to set that we need to wait for a dependent data port to finish because we want to return the response document which this dependent data port will generate. If we will not set this, then the dependent data port will be started asynchronically and then we will not have access to the generated response document. And now we have to use this parameter product IDs in the SQL condition of our worker to limit the objects which get used for the export. And to do that, we can use twig syntax. If product IDs, let's look for the correct naming again. This is the parameter name. If product IDs is set, then we filter that the object ID is in those product IDs. And if it's not set, then we define no condition in this case, so it will execute the full export. And those parameters here are not only possible for dependent data ports, but you can also fill them for REST API endpoints, for example, in the URL. So when you provide product IDs in the URL for a REST API um, export, for example, then it's also possible to limit the, the objects being returned. We now save that. Now, when we start this data port, we can assign the products, for example, some from the tree, sorry, and some from the search. And when we start that, we get our JSON response, and there is our four products which we have added. So this way you can add a form which can be used to trigger exports. And the last topic for today is that I want to show you how to use such an object wizard to create print documents. For that, I've prepared a print document template, which looks like that. For this, I've used the to, uh, CMS toolbox bundle, but it's also possible to create these area bricks on your own. Um, doesn't matter. So I have created a layout where I've had on the left an image, then a field for the product name, description, barcode, which gets automatically generated, and a field for the price. And now I have created two data ports to automatically create those print documents. It's the same as before. We have an object wizard data port, which can get the products which shall be used for the brochure. This data port is of course synchronous because it needs to wait for the other data port to finish. And the product IDs of the set products get transferred to the dependent data port 68. And this is our worker. Our worker again has such a data port con uh, condition that it uses the product IDs with, which have been provided as a parameter. And from this, from the found objects, it extracts those fields which we see here at the bottom. Now in the mapping, ah, one, one thing I got. The important thing for importing documents is that we set a content master document. This is our template, which we have, which I've just shown. So this is this one. The, when importing documents, then you can map all those area brick fields, those area editables, um, you can map in the import mapping. And to define which fields exist, this is, so to say, the class definition for documents. Now, when we look at attribute mapping, then we have all those fields which we have in our template, we have now available for mapping. So I've prepared this already. And when we now add this data port, the object wizard data port to the main menu and reload PIM core,
then we can open this object wizard the form appears we can select some products and start generation now we see that all those documents got created and because our template is a print page a print document a print container gets created when you have normal documents this does not happen but it's a special thing for print and under this in this print container we see our print pages when we open them we see that the image got exchanged the product name got exchanged description the barcode is a new one and also the price and this way we could now generate it as PDF or if we um, want to generate the whole brochure generate the PDF for the print container this is currently not configured on my system but in the end it will look similar to this so that all those different print documents get listed one over the other and when you get this as the PDF as a result I think your sales team would be happy that's it for today I hope I could convince you that those object wizard forms are a usable thing and as always if you have any questions put it here in the comments or write to the github issues or info at blackbit.de thanks for listening bye bye if you got any questions about this or other data director features feel free to contact us via help at blackbit.com also make sure to check out our data director tutorials maybe some of your questions are already covered by them and by subscribing to our channel you'll be always up to date thank you for watching